There are many cumbersome ways to kill a man. You can make him walk to the top of a hill with a plank of wood and nail him to it. But to do this properly, you require a crowd of people wearing sandals, a cock that crows, a cloak to dissect, some vinegar, a sponge, and one man to hammer the nails home. Or you can take a length of steel shaped and chased in a traditional way and attempt to pierce the metal cage he wears. But for this you need white horses, English trees, men with bows and arrows, at least two flags, a prince and a castle to hold your banquet in. Dispensing with nobility you may, if the wind allows, blow gas at him. But then you need a mile of mud sliced through with ditches, not to mention black boots, bomb craters, more mud, a plague of rats, a dozen songs and some round hats made of steel. In an age of aeroplanes, you may fly miles above your victim and dispose of him by pressing one small switch. All you then require is an ocean to separate you, two systems of government, a nation's scientists, several factories, a psychopath, and land that no one needs for several years. These are, as I began, cumbersome ways to kill a man. Simpler, direct, and much more neat is to make sure that he is living somewhere in the middle of the 20th century and leave him there.